right, time to make some Tomb King's terrain. One thing I definitely want is a Sphinx. Now, I don't have a lot of confidence in my sculpting ability, so I'm going to make it as simple as possible. So I've decided that I'm going to make it a corner piece, and it's going to be just the front of the Sphinx sticking out of a hill. That way I don't have to create an entire freestanding Sphinx. I only have to get the facade, the paws, and the face. Don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm going to give it a shot. And the first thing I did, I took my pink foam insulation and I roughed out the outline of what the face should be. Getting the proportions uh, about right. And the great thing about this is once I cut it out, it's going to be old, buried, crumbling weather. That way, if the edges are rough and don't look so great, I've got a reason for it. So anyway, this is the first step. And I'm going to cut it out with my... Um, little knife you can get this at Hobby Lobby and then we'll go from there so we've got our piece cut out it's very rough at the moment a little uneven doesn't have to be perfect as I mentioned but we can also uh, work the edges later with a file and with sandpaper if we want to do not use an exacto knife or a box knife because styrofoam kills your blades I learned that the hard way the other thing I did was I started cutting out pieces to represent the four legs and paws. Four legs, F-O-R-E, not F-O-U-R. Uh, two for each, and what we'll do is we'll end up gluing these on the front, and that's going to start giving us our three-dimensional effect for when it appears to stick out of the ground. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out the face. The Tomb King army is a skeleton army. It's all undead, so rather than trying to make a face like the actual Sphinx in Egypt. I'm going to try to make something that resembles a skull. Like I said, I'm not much of a sculptor, so I'm sure it's going to look weird, but I think it'll at least look better than if I tried to make a human face. So that is the next thing I'm going to try. I'm going to just sketch something out on my foam and cut it out. Okay, got my skull here. As predicted, it looks pretty bad. The drawing of it on the foam actually was better than the finished product. My cutting was poor, but you know, I think once I tinker with it, rough it up, paint over it, put sand on it, it won't be terrible. But anyway, this is basically the idea. And I think I'm going to give him one of those little things you see on the pharaohs. I don't, I don't know what it is. For someone who likes history, I don't know if that's just supposed to represent the beard done up in a funky way or what, but I'm going to do that and we'll see where we go from there we're making progress i took the skull and went around and roughed up the edges try to give it you know make it not so squared off i tried to just cut out eye sockets and places where the nose would be failed so i just cut it all the way through we'll deal with that later i also melted in little lines where the teeth will be it's super rough and disproportionate and, you know, just makes me admire actual artists and the best hobbyists who can make really cool sculpture. But I think for a weathered, worn-out Sphinx, it's going to be okay. I made a little thing for the chin, and I looked it up, and it is a false beard that pharaohs would wear for ceremonial purposes. Not that anybody asked, but I'm telling you anyway. I cut this little crescent moon shape, sliced it in half because it was so thick. I think I'm going to leave the rough side out just to give a little texture make it a little more 3D. And then I cut little triangular pieces that are going to go, I guess this is a hood. I've always thought of it as like a representing the hood of a cobra. And then of course we have the four legs. Now the other thing I'm going to do before gluing it all together is because this is supposed to be something that's eroded out of a hill, I'm going to carve in some lines to represent the blocks that built it. I'm going to, we're going to assume that the facade has been washed away and you're seeing the blocks beneath it that form the base of the structure. So I'll cut those lines in. Then we'll glue it together and start thinking about the hill. All right, the bits are glued into place and now the waiting game begins. Also the grooves for the blocks. Another thing I did was I cut a foundation piece cut off the edge of a very very old piece of foam that's been really roughed up which is perfect for our purposes cut in some grooves for blocks and it will go just like that and it's finished now we said we were going to put this you know set it in a hill and frankly while I had a plan 
for the Sphinx. I had no plan whatsoever for how I'm going to do the hill, so I'm going to be winging this. But what I've done to start off is I cut out the corner of some packing foam. If you're a terrain maker, you probably save a lot of your weird foam, even if you don't have a plan for it. So I cut out a piece that will fit my base. And now I'm just going to kind of try to figure it out from there. You know, that's the good thing about having to wait for the Sphinx to dry is that that gives me time to think about what I'm going to do. So what I did was I just started cutting and breaking and stacking and gluing white foam to build up the background. And then the Sphinx will rest in front of it and hopefully give it some support. We'll fill in behind it and around it. And then on the edges, I'm just going to start taking all these broken pieces with rough edges, gluing them, piling them up. And hopefully that's going to look like a bunch of crumbled, busted up rocks. So we'll see how it goes, but we are moving Here's forward. Here's what we've done. I basically built up the surrounding area behind it, put the Sphinx in place, and then, like we talked about, I just started busting up foam and gluing it together all the way around. There's still going to be gaps to fill in with, you know, I'll probably use sand and gravel, maybe more bits of foam. But I think in general, we've successfully made it look like the Sphinx has been eroded or carved into a rock wall, maybe more so than eroded. And then stability was a concern for me because of the way I cobbled all that white foam together. So I cut a couple pieces of insulation, glued them to the outside. And so now the waiting game begins. Going to have to let it all dry. And then comes the painting. But I think the most difficult part is done. We'll Okay, moving on to stage two. I sprinkled on sand in a lot of places and brushed it with a darker brown. I'm going to have to fill a few spots I didn't quite get to. And then we will start dry brushing with a lighter shade. Highlighting is done. I went um, lighter shade with the Sphinx itself to make it stand out from the hill, but use the same base color for both. So now we're going to add in a few little bits and pieces, details, sand, gravel, maybe some plants. But, you know, it's really taken shape and it's not amazing, but looks pretty good. Here we are. As you can see, I decided to try to break up some of the unrelenting brown. So I mixed in some plants in places. I even sprinkled on just a little bit of a mix of flocking and sand just to look like plant life that's taken root here and there. And also sprinkled on a little bit of white ballast. This is another thing you don't want to let get away from you or it'll look just as unrelenting as the brown paint does. Overall though, I think it's a pretty fun piece. It wasn't too difficult to make. And for my skill level, it looks all right. So once it dries, I'm looking forward to seeing it on my battlefield. 